Welcome everyone, Adam Mazu Wu here. Today's adventure will consist mostly here in Orange County, California, the city of Fullerton, where I'm gonna kind of step into the punk rock world. There are a lot of bands who got their starts, start in this neck of the woods. Social distortion is being the one I am featuring today, and I'm gonna go to some of their stomping grounds, where they began, and just kind of see what remains of those original spots. I'm starting at Troy High, where the founder and singer, Mike Ness, met a couple friends who became Social Distortion, right here at Troy High. All right, I'm inviting you to join me as I go to some other places. Shall you? And it's only about a mile from that spot to the Black Hole Apartment that the adolescents, another SoCal band, wrote a song about. Later on in the Social D career, Mike Ness went back and wrote uh, another song about these accommodations called Playpen. So there were two, two songs pinned about this, about this apartment, which you could, could deem a punk house. In fact, a lot of other punk houses name themselves the Black Hole, just like, just like this place was. And it, it was located right through this gate underneath that stairwell. I apologize for the lawn maintenance that is happening right now. But underneath that stairwell, just underneath is a door. And that was the black hole. As best as I can figure out, that was, that was the spot. Unit two. Kind of a who's who of that, of that scene back in the day. Adolescence, Social D, Agent Orange and uh, quite, a, quite a few others congregate inside that apartment. Not sure if they owned a vehicle at that time, but if they did, this would have been a parking spot. This is around the back of the property. Number two right there. A train, you could hear the train in the distance. I did read some interviews that back then, there was not a fence here around the pool. There it is, number two. Yeah. You can see the number right on the door. It's pretty dang cool. Steve Soto from the Adolescence. There used to be a video, which I cannot find anywhere. It's been deleted anywhere online, but he stood here before his passing, kind of gave a little tour of the property. I had a little chat with the, the lawn maintenance guy. He did, not, he did not know the history of what I was mentioning. I'm gonna walk over here to this fence. I've also heard, it's kind of a strong rumor that well, there's a story about Mike Ness it, it, who knows if it's true or not, but he was handcuffed to this very fence. That's, that's what the this, this stories say. Don't know what was happening with the handcuffs. It was something of something of a nature that he was not under arrest. It had to do with, you know, a, a party night. You just picture a young Mike Ness right here, handcuffed to this. Kind of use your imagination. <laughs> Just a few feet away from the infamous, infamous, infamous black hole here in Fullerton. I've heard so many stories, read so many interviews. I've never been here before. This is the first time I've ever kind of cruised by this area. Pretty neat to see. Pretty legendary in the punk world. And I would imagine most of the residents in this area might not even know the, the backstory and the history. It goes that way a lot of times. So that's kind of how it kind of how it goes. And from here, about four miles over to the recording studio where they
recorded their first couple albums and their practice space for many years after. It was right here along these very railroad tracks where two albums were recorded. Right over in this in this section here, this unit, number N, well, letter N, I should say, in fact, which is a couple doors down. Mommy's Little Monster and Prison Bound took place right inside that door. And then years later, they continue to use it as a practice space. There is, there's some footage of Mike Ness here in front entering in, being interviewed, and he kind of gives like a little walkthrough tour and explains it. This is way back in the day. And from what I can tell, the little awning there still looks the same. And as he walked in, kind of introduced some of the other people that were in there. Matt Freeman, one of my favorite bass players of all time, was filling in for a show that was going to be the next night, and they were practicing for that. And that all took place in here. A lot of other musicians recorded albums. But probably the most famous, famous, you know, Mommy's Little Monster, which is one of my favorites of Social D's right inside here which kind of kind of blows my mind a little bit when i think about it I tried looking through the window they have it they have it really tarped up pretty well with tint so you cannot even see in at all i don't believe anyone is occupying this particular establishment maybe it's up for rent even tried opening it and it's locked 1895 in this kind of stuff fascinates me especially when it's a band that i've listened to for years where they got their start, where those iconic albums that, that spawned many more and inspired a lot of other bands around this area and across the world. It all began right here. Well, a series of places, but this is one of the key elements of where it began. He goes on to mention in that interview that so many times he wrote about trains going by, walking the tracks, and. It, it was all influenced by the railroad tracks that are here. And he also went on to state that on those early recordings, if you listen closely, you can faintly hear the railroad cars in the background. And that would be these tracks right here, located just adjacent to this side. In fact, if you kind of peek down, it's about the fourth door down there. Well, actually, it's, no, it's the second, possibly third door. So pretty close to the tracks, right here. I wish there was a train going by. That would create the proper ambiance. There is a cactus, however. So at least there's a cactus. And my shadow, you can see I'm kind of cupping the top of the camera because the wind is very strong out here. Hello. Driving around the back here, here is what would be the load-in door. So if you really think about it, equipment could have been you know, they could have parked here, loaded the bass amps, drums, right into there. So if those walls could talk in there, they could tell some, some fun stories, just like the black hole, I assure you. As well as this alleyway. I should also mention the name of the studio was called the Casbah, which gives me some, some clash feels. Could have been named after, could have been named after one of their songs, perhaps. Maybe that was an influence on on the name of the studio. And it's located here on Commonwealth. It's the name of the road. Oh dang, there's a train going by now. What if I can make it back down there in time? Wait for me, train. Wait for me, train. Let me get down there. say I feel like I'm living in a, another state of mind. There's the tracks. There's the train. There's 1895N with the soothing sounds of the railroad in the distance. Perfect. Nailed it. All right, off to the next spot. Backtracking now this direction to a former record store that shared the same name, possibly named after that punk house, Black Hole Records. Woo, it is windy. Take a look at that. This is Harbor Boulevard, still in Fullerton. 
Oh, check this out. This is on the National Register of Historic Places. This barber shop. And right up here is the record store. Which I believe still exists. It's been moved to another location, but the the original spot, which was here for a couple decades or more, used to be right up here. And they still have the signage there. Now, I, I just, I do not want to disturb. There's a, a gentleman sleeping in there. I don't want to disturb him, so I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to get too close to let him have his, his slumber, but that was the spot. Instead, I'll show you this photograph from the early 90s. Look at the window. You know, all, all of it looks the same. They have moved all the products out and it's just abandoned now. People are using that area for you know, some shelter. But there's social distortion. Right there, standing in that, that same spot. Back in the early 90s. The lyrics to one of my favorite songs by them is Reach for the Sky because tomorrow may never come. And that is it, very true. You have to kind of live each day as, as best you can. And it really goes because it, when it comes to that band, they have had, a, it's kind of a revolving door with members. And they have, they have lost quite a few over the years, four, maybe five in their existence. It, it kind of makes you think about the lyrics of that song. Boy, this wind is really gusty. When I say lost, I'm, I'm meant to say passed on. A lot of bands will have members that, you know, they quit, retire, fired. That was not what I was alluding to. That sunburst is very beautiful through those trees. Leaving Fullerton now, heading about 20 miles down to Costa Mesa to a couple other spots. One of them being the very first concert, the very first gig that they ever played. Now it is a little confusing because I believe the original building has been removed, but on the corner of 17th Street and Placentia, right around this general vicinity, possibly right here where Hank's Electric Supply is, used to be the Cuckoo's Nest, where in 1979, after being a band for just about a year, they played their very first show right here off this road. And they went on to play quite a few more here at this establishment that no longer exists, the Cuckoo's Nest. And check out some of the other bands that played around that time. This is a flyer from 1981, Adolescence, TSOL. Goodness gracious, Black Flag, Go-Go's. Yeah, this was, a, this was a happening spot. Here's another really good one with Social D playing with the Subhumans. Looks like the promoter during those times, someone named Jerry Roach. Agent Orange, the crowd, the blasters. I'm thinking it was right here. This is where the ad address pinpoints me to this precise location. This is all I can go off of of what the exterior did look like. You can see the corner there and the marquee. It could have been the very next property over. Or is it the same building, just the marquee's been removed and rebricked, Or did they bulldoze it and place this here? Or was that it over there? It's a toughie. Or was it here at this corner piece? Either way, it was on that very block where they played their first show, outside of, you know, house parties, their first their first gig at a paying gig at a venue. It's kind of interesting, the, the last spot is right here off of Fullerton Avenue, which is not even in Fullerton, it's in Costa Mesa. It's just uh, the next little block over, well, it might actually be on this block, is a mural pertaining to the subject matter. I just thought it was very interesting that it's right off of Fullerton Ave, and they're from Fullerton. Interesting. Okay, that's a tiny bit of a stretch. It's about 100 yards away from that cross street. But take a look at this. Wow, this mural here on the side of this barber shop is, this is incredible. It's a story of my life. 
has the cuckoo's nest. There's Mike Ness right there in the middle, who is really into classic cars, classic car alert. And there are some lyrics, life goes by so fast, you only want to do what you think is right, close your eyes, and then it's past. That's the lyrics, the story of my life. Wow, this is, this is, this is awesome. The logo, with the cocktail there, a little cigarette, or maybe a cigar or some other, some other item. Punk rockers. Very well done. It's interesting that it's here in Costa Mesa and not in Fullerton, however, but I, I guess since this is where the first show was, not where they recorded the album or resided the black hole. Nonetheless, still Orange County. Really great work. That's gonna do it for today. If you're new here, please subscribe by doing so. Helps keep you in the loop, update on future uploads here on this channel. It's a little bit of a different type of episode, but it's something I wanted to something I wanted to cover, a subject matter that I've been wanting to kind of traverse around to the spots of for quite some time, and I did it. And if you enjoyed this particular episode, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know you care. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is the vlog. It's over. Yesterday is history, and tomorrow's a mystery. Such good lyrics. Also, this art piece was done by Never1959. It's written there on the side of the curb.